Hi, I'm Dr. David Dobson. Welcome to Conversations. Today, my guest is Dr. Pola Oliwasina. Pola is a science instructor at Red Deer Polytechnic in Alberta, Canada. He obtained his PhD in public health from Central University of Nicaragua. Today, we will discuss his current research on impact of racial discrimination on the mental health of Black Canadians. It's a great pleasure to have you on my show, Pola. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dobson. Nice to meet you and nice to be on your show. Thank you and welcome. Why did you decide to study this topic? Okay. Thank you very much for the opportunity to discuss my ongoing research project, and, uh, which is titled uh, Investigating the Impact of Racial Discrimination on the Mental Health of Black Canadians. Um, I'll first of all start by saying that this study is funded by uh, Radio Polytechnic and the Social Sciences and Humanity Research Council, uh, which is the SHRC. Uh, this study is uh, a collaborative effort supported uh, by my esteemed colleagues, uh, Dr. Juliet tonabadi from the School of Wellness and uh, Health and Wellness at Radio Polytechnic, and Dr. Joan Sajay, social scientist in Radio Polytechnic, Dr. Aisha Giwar, Radio Polytechnic, and also uh, Dr. Uh, Anita Erwan uh, from School of Public Health, University of Alberta. And of course, the invaluable resources of uh, the research assistants that are working with us on this project. So together, we endeavor to shed uh, light on um, uh, a crucial yet often overlooked issues within public health, uh, of course, which is the profound impact of racial discrimination on the mental well-being of Black Canadians. So uh, I'll just talk about my interests and then we can we can just go from there. So my interest in uh, is in public health, which yeah. of course stems from uh, a deep seated uh, uh, commitment uh, into understanding and addressing the disparities that uh, undermine uh, the health and vitality of marginalized communities in Canada and even everywhere. And of course, within this framework, we have the intersection of racial discrimination that happens. And then racial discrimination and uh, mental health um, actually um, so far has emerged as a focal point that, uh, I mean, focal point of inquiry that people are asking about. And of course, my decision to delve into this um, very complex topic was, you know, propelled by uh, both uh, some empirical evidence that we've mm -hmm. seen, uh, you know, that emphasize the urgency of examining uh, the connection between uh, uh, discrimination and mental health outcomes. Uh, so talking about statistics right now, so in 2021, mm -hmm. uh, according to uh, Census Canada, uh, Statistic Canada, according to, uh, I mean, in uh, 2021 census, mm -hmm. Uh, Canada's black population was uh, 1.5 million, accounting for about 4.3% of the overall population, and of course, which accounts for 16.1% of the racialized population in Canada. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the black this this is just to show that the black community or the black population continues to expand, mm -hmm. and of course, they also predicted in that report. Statistics mm -hmm. Canada predicted that the population of the blacks will be about three million. Uh, by 2041. Okay, mm -hmm. so now, according to a study as well that is uh, uh, that was conducted, there was a re there was a report that a report that shows a recurrent exposure to racial discrimination that uh, that is that is associated with uh, uh, difficulties mm -hmm. in functioning and poor mental health outcomes. Mm -hmm. And another report also said that uh, 86 percent, you know of those people that participated in that study reported having uh, experienced racial uh, and uh, discrimination at least once mm -hmm. in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then we've not, we noted that Black Canadians um, have historically faced uh, mm -hmm. racism and discrimination in Canada, mm -hmm. which has resulted in different disparities in social, mm -hmm. in uh, economic and health uh, outcomes. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, Racial discrimination itself can have significant influence on health outcomes of Black Canadians. Okay, mm -hmm. of course, which which as I mean, which which includes um, increased rates of depression, mm -hmm. increased rate of anxiety, mm -hmm. increased rate of PTSD as well. Mm -hmm. So now studies that we have seen has also constantly mm -hmm. shown that individuals from racialized communities yeah. experience disproportionately uh, high rates of psychological distress. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. distress, uh, including depression and anxiety, mm -hmm. compared to the white counterpart. Okay, yeah. so for instance, um, uh, there's a survey that is conducted by Canadian Community Health uh, Survey, mm -hmm. it shows that Black Canadians are more likely to report poor mental health uh, than the general population. So, and um, this is this is actually the problem but mm -hmm. beyond the numbers lies the lived experience of people yeah. okay of individuals that are yeah. trying to work on the dangers and effect of discrimination on their mental well-being you know and how it permeates to different yeah. facets of their life yeah. you know and all that so yeah. uh, the impact of this racial discrimination extends far beyond individual you know mm -hmm. suffering which cuts across families cuts across uh, communities yeah. and of course our society at large yeah. so this disparities in mental health outcome contributes to cycles of different traumas for black people mm -hmm. socioeconomic uh, inequalities mm -hmm. diminished social cohesion and so many other issues yeah. so uh, in the light of these realities this research that we are conducting mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. seeks to address three fundamental questions okay. and then the first question is mm -hmm. how does racial discrimination affect the mental health of black Canadians. Mm. We want to understand that. And then number two, we want to know, know what are the underlying mechanisms and factors that can contribute to racial discrimination's impact mm. on mental health outcome. And then the third thing that we're looking at is how can policy mm. and practice be informed by mm -hmm. our findings of this mm. study to improve the mental health uh, outcomes of Black Canadians. So by asking these questions, we seek to understand uh, how mm. um, how far we can go from here. Right, yeah. It's definitely very interesting and very uh, very important study you're conducting. So you. how are you conducting the study? Okay, so we're conducting the study in uh, two, two designs, actually. Okay. So the first one, uh, we're using... Uh, a comprehensive mixed methods okay. approach. And then we're using that to explore the impact of racial discrimination on the mental mm -hmm. health of Black Canadians. Mm -hmm. um, of course, recognizing the multifaceted nature of this, we are integrating yeah. Yeah. Uh, qualitative and quantitative methodologies to capture yeah. the richness of yeah. experiences and, of course, elucidate uh, underlying mechanism as well. Yeah. So the research design, the first one, is divided into two distinct phases, which mm -hmm. is... Uh, qualitative and the quantitative. So, okay. so for the qualitative is what we are on right now. I'll talk a little bit about that. And then I'll also talk a little bit on quantitative, which we want to do uh, very soon. So okay. for the qualitative phase, we have started and we are using an in-depth interviews, you know, to delve mm -hmm. into the lived experience of Black Canadians. And okay. we understand that this approach will allow us to capture the degrees yeah. of um uh, individual narratives, like mm -hmm. their coping mechanism, their yeah. resilience, uh, resilience, yeah. and of course, we want to also use it to identify some factors mm -hmm. that can shape mental outcomes. Mm -hmm. So, true, we, we, we're doing uh, this sampling uh, across Canada and across all the provinces in Canada. Okay. So, uh, we we are also ensuring that we are seeking representative sample across age gender, socioeconomic status, mm. and post geographical okay. location so that we can it can be a, a good representative of uh, uh, the entire country. But yeah. for the other one, which is the quantitative phase that we're going to start very soon, yeah. we want to build on the insight that we are gleaning from this qualitative mm. phase. Yeah. So it will employ some structure, uh, structured surveys that's yeah. going to be administered to a larger sample of uh, Black Canadians. Oh. And uh, we're aiming at about... Uh, almost 2,000 uh, black, uh, black people to right. participate in it. And uh, we want to assess the prevalence of the mental health disorder, like yeah. passive discrimination among uh -huh. the population, their psychosocial mm -hmm. determinants. Mm -hmm. And of course, we want to use different, we're going to be using different validated skills and standardized measures uh, okay. to get the robust association and quantify the impact of uh, yeah. discrimination on mental health outcomes yeah. within this population. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it looks very extensive and very detailed study. Yeah. And yeah, I can't uh, wait to see what more you learn from this study. But so far, what have you learned? Okay, so uh, we have some preliminary findings uh, okay. already. So while the oh, study nice. is still ongoing and we have uh, 
primary data analysis on the way mm -hmm. for the uh, qualitative aspects. We have gathered valuable insights from okay. a combination of secondary data, um, uh, even primary data, literature reviews, yeah. uh, evidence that also shed light on the intersection of racial discrimination and mental health among uh, Black Canadians. So okay. we've had so many people uh, during the interview come to us to tell us that, oh, mm. They bully all blacks. Those are their words mm. specifically. They bully all blacks. Mm. She overused me because I'm black. She said mm. I am a monkey. You know, okay. those are the things that we are we are getting uh, mm. from that. And then another mm. person said, um, mm. I, uh, in my home, when I come back home, I am very aggressive because of the mood mixtures that has affected mm. me from work. Mm. Uh, uh, makes me cry. I'm mm. so depressed. Mm -hmm. No one to talk to. And um, another person said, uh, because I'm black, we have extra mile to prove ourselves that mm -hmm. we can actually do this work because mm -hmm. they look down on us. So those mm -hmm. are the things that mm -hmm. have come out from, and they are very interesting things mm -hmm. that, you know, that has come out from uh, uh, this uh, 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 research so far. Okay. So we're doing um, a lot yeah. of uh, literature reviews as well. And many thanks to our research assistants. They're helping mm. us on mm. comprehensive review of the literature. Yeah. And yeah. so far, literature has revealed a complex mm. web of factors that yeah. underline the relationship between racial discrimination and mental health outcomes. Yeah. So we've seen themes yeah. such as passive discrimination, mm. racial identity, mm. cultural mm. resilience, um, mm. Uh, coping strategies, yeah. you know, these are salient predictors of psychological well-being among yeah. Black Canadians. So yeah. uh, we've seen yeah. so many other things. Yeah. Uh, we've seen uh, some of the key insights uh, mm. from what we've already done uh, mm. involves intersectionality mm. and mental health, right? Mm. Uh, those mm. are the things that we've seen, intersection of race, mm. gender, class, mm. and other social determinant I mean, mm. determining factor that mm. shape individuals' experience of um, discrimination and resilience as mm. well. Mm. And then, of course, uh, we've seen another thing that has come up is from the team that we've seen is um, resilience, community mm. resilience, and of course, empowerment. Mm. You know, yeah. despite a lot of people facing um, uh, yeah. systemic barriers, yeah. black communities demonstrate yeah. this resilience yeah. and, you know, yeah. they challenge discriminatory mm. practices and advocate mm. for equitable, you know, policies mm. and services. And mm. then, of course, all of these do mm. have policy implications as well. You know, right. these yeah. findings, they have significant implication for policy and practices, and they underscore the needs, you know, for targeted intervention that can address the root cause of mental disparities and promote uh, mm. cultural competencies, mm. anti-racism, mm. social justice with health yeah. service, I mean, healthcare, and even yeah. social service system as well. Yeah. That's yeah. a very interesting finding so far. So what are you hoping to achieve with this study? Okay. Yeah. So uh, for this study, uh, our study aspires to mm. uh, achieve several overarching uh, objectives that extend beyond mm. merely documenting mm. uh uh, the impact of racial discrimination on mental health of Black yeah. Canadians. Yeah. So we envision our, our research as um, a catalyst uh, for meaningful change. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we want to foster mm -hmm. a large di dialogue, you know, on creating um, uh, inclusive, supportive mm -hmm. environment that can uphold the um, the uh, dignity and mm -hmm. well-being of all individuals yeah. with diverse and equitable society. Mm -hmm. So some of the things that we are open to achieve also includes creating awareness and understanding mm -hmm. because we see that that's very important. First and foremost, you know, mm -hmm. this study aims to raise this awareness and deepen mm -hmm. understanding, you know, mm -hmm. of the pervasive and detrimental mm -hmm. effect of racial discrimination, mental mm -hmm. uh, outcomes among Black Canadians. And then, mm -hmm. of course, we want to inform evidence-based inter intervention because we mm -hmm. believe that as uh, the Black community need more intervention. And mm -hmm. of course, you know, beyond awareness, raising, mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I mentioned, uh, the res uh, research mm -hmm. also wants to inform evidence-based intervention and policy mm -hmm. reforms aimed yeah. at addressing the root cause mm -hmm. of mental health disparities within uh, the Black communities. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, we want to identify key determinants mm -hmm. and mechanisms that are underlining the impact mm -hmm. of discrimination and mental mm -hmm. health well-being. Uh, 
And then we mm. also aim to develop some targeted strategies that can promote mm. uh, resilience yeah. among the Black, uh, wow. foster social support network, yeah. mitigate adverse uh, effect mm. of discrimination as well. Mm. And then also, we want to also co empower communities and individuals as well with this research, right. which is the last. So yeah. lastly, this study uh, seeks to... Um, empower Black Canadians and mm -hmm. ma marginalized community yeah. to become agents of change mm -hmm. within their own lives and environment, you know. Mm -hmm. And they want to do this by centering their experiences and perspectives mm -hmm. uh, so that it, uh, we also aim to uh, catalyze grassroots movement and yeah. community-led initiatives that advocate yeah. for self-determination, like yeah. empowerment and collective well-being of mm -hmm. Black Canadians. That's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, and you know this is a subject of serious matter, obviously. So I was wondering, are you also collaborating with like a different agencies or different expert in this area, like psychiatric or social services, or or like how this uh, study going to work out in terms of collaboration? Okay. Yeah, so so yeah. currently we're collaborating with uh, some uh, organizations in okay. uh, Red Air uh, at this okay. phase, but the larger okay. collaboration with other stakeholders will come because, you know, this is like mm -hmm. a pilot phase. So we yeah. want to understand the concept, we want to know what is yeah. going on at the moment. Yeah. And then yeah. uh, after that, then we can now make it wider and collaborate with some pen down organizations okay. that we have to okay. see how we can get this done okay. at the end of the day. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so obviously, this is a very uh, extensive study and the detailed study. Can you share some of the research limitations, possible limitations? Oh, yeah, we have some limitations, you know, <laughs> most research. Will have. So, we always have limitations. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. So, so uh, you know, while our study endeavors uh, to provide valuable insights, into the impact of uh, racial discrimination on mental health of Black Canadians, yeah. um, there are certain limitations, for example, mm -hmm. resource constraint. You yeah. know, that's one of the primary limitations of our research, yeah. which relates to resource constraints, including yeah. limitation in funding, yeah. uh, personnel, yeah. and even mm. time to do yeah. you know, the research. You know, yeah. um, many thanks to uh, the yeah. um, uh, the team, the research team, we mm. go up and beyond to ensure that we get things done, even at outside uh, working hours and weekends, doing interviews with people, even uh, had some interviews late into the night because uh yeah. the participants can yeah. only be available from 9 p.m right yeah. so yeah. we've had several interviews so this yeah. constraints these constraints uh, may have implication yeah. you know for the scope and scale of data collection yeah. efforts yeah. as well as the breadth of analysis yeah. uh so but to address this particular constraint, we mm -hmm. have prioritized uh, strategic allocation of resources, we have yeah. le leverage on existing yeah. partnership, working with yeah. stakeholders and collaboration. Yeah. And we have also optimized um, uh, efficiencies in data collection and analysis process. And then also okay. the second limitation that I would say is uh, sample size and representativeness. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So that's another limitation. Uh, yeah. You know, while effort are being made to recruit diverse participants from mm -hmm. various the geographic uh, uh, regions in Canada and demographic background, the yeah. sample may not fully capture the like heterogeneity of mm. uh, I mean the heterogeneity of uh, experiences within the Black Canadian population, yeah. right? So, for example, uh, mm -hmm. uh, there's a particular province that uh, we have not yet met our mm. sample size for that area, right? Okay. So to in, to mitigate this limitation, we yeah. have uh, employed opposite sampling techniques, okay. right? Engaged yeah. in community outreach initiatives, yeah. conducted sensitivity analysis to assess the robustness of finding across subgroups, people yeah. that are willing to participate in yeah. that particular uh, province. And then of course, we have data collection challenges including participant recruitment, mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah, getting data quality and, you know, factors such as stigma, like yeah. those are one of the challenges yeah. because, yeah, yeah so, some some of these participants don't yeah. even want to show their face, right? Yeah. They just come up and 
uh, because some of yeah. them we've seen some of them cry, yeah. you know, and you know, yeah. stigma, distrust in yeah. researchers uh, yeah. asking us that are you sure the yeah. uh, confidentiality yeah. and all that, you know, yeah. and then some logistical barriers yeah. that may impact the willingness of individuals mm. to participate um, in the study or provide candid responses. So those are yeah. one of the uh, yeah. challenges as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, because you mentioned some of the cultural barrier as well as stigma as well, because some people may not explain because of, as you mentioned, stigma or maybe not able to express in certain mm -hmm. ways, for example. So, so yeah, it's definitely some of the challenges. Uh, uh, what is your advice to researchers who wish to undertake a similar type of study? Mm. Okay, yeah, good question. <laughs> good question. Yeah, so, uh, well, my advice for researchers is uh, understand the context. Okay. That's the first thing, understand, mm -hmm. understand the context, like yeah. familiarize, familiarize yourself with uh, the historical, social, mm -hmm. and cultural context, yeah. you know, within which your research topic is situated. Like, yeah. you must know the Black community very yeah. well. Yeah. For example, if you're if you're working with yeah. an indigenous community, you must know yeah. them very well. So right. because this will provide valuable insight into the mm. experiences and challenges faced by this population. Mm -hmm. And you know, and then of course, when you talk to them, you have to talk in a cultural appropriate way as well. Yeah. And then engage with communities. That's another yeah. advice, like prioritize yeah. community engagement yeah. and collaboration throughout uh, the research process. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, don't do it alone. Seek um, yeah. input from community members, stakeholders, and even advocacy groups to yeah. ensure that research questions are, are relevant, yeah. they're culturally appropriate, mm -hmm. and they align with the community needs and priorities. Right. And another thing is always see things in the intersectional lens as well. You know, mm. recognize the intersecting identities and social determinants yeah. that can shape uh, individuals' experiences of, for example, discrimination and resilience. Mm -hmm. You know, incorporate and yeah. uh, intersectional. It, it, I mean, intersectional framework into research, yeah. Yeah. design, and analysis to capture the complexity of lived experience as well. Yeah. And of course, the one that is also important is ethical consideration mm. address ethical consideration which is very important yeah. you know like prioritize ethical consideration throughout the research yeah. process is important yeah. you yeah. know particularly when working with yeah. vulnerable or marginalized population mm. ensure that you form consent is collected confidentiality yeah. is kept yeah. and uh, uh participant autonomy you yeah. know if you want to withdraw from the study you allow yeah. them right and yeah. then, and here to ethical guidelines and regulation, you know. Yeah. 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 So, so of, of course, another thing yeah. is uh, uh, my re my my uh, advice is promote actionable research as well. Yeah. Research yeah. To try to yeah. you know like yeah. generate actionable findings that can contribute to positive social change and inform evidence based intervention yeah. and policy reforms. Yeah. Uh, translates research findings into practical mm. recommendation for government yeah. stakeholders. You know that can resonate with policymakers, yeah. practitioners, yeah. and yeah. even community stakeholders yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. So and also uh, collaboration as well. Collaboration, mm. knowledge exchange is mm. very important. Mm. Uh, foster collaboration and knowledge exchange with uh, fellow researchers, practitioners, mm -hmm. um, policymakers, mm. and community members as well. You know, yeah. share your insights, your best yeah. practices, your lessons yeah. learned. Yeah. To collectively advance knowledge and promote social mm. justice and equity mm. you know yeah. yeah so those are my my thank advice you. thank you for your advice i just i was just wondering uh because uh back into your research study so while you're talking to some of the participant and they're sharing their uh, uh, uh mental health and uh, depression and in case during this conversation, you realize that maybe some of the participants need some help, like they need to go to see a doctor or so go clinic or go to a psychiatrist. Do you have some mechanism where you can direct them and refer them to uh, appropriate uh, sources or resources? Yes. yes. So so okay. uh, uh, by our uh, our standard, we okay. ensure that we refer everybody. You know, okay. everybody either the breakdown yeah. or not, we're yeah. having to uh to yeah. where we can get help. Okay. Like we have different resources, books to okay. read, 
We give them e-copies of that. And then also we give them links of who to contact okay. for help, for counseling okay. and all that. So okay. we have a robust resource that we okay. send to them, you know, during uh, the, uh, okay. the interviews. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I suspect that because especially listening to someone itself is a healing when, when people come in and sharing the stories. It's painful because you're reliving that moment and yeah. then opening up to the person and telling the story. And that could be a little bit traumatic expense, depending upon the person. Yeah. It could be a traumatic exactly. expense because reliving that moment, which you've tried to forget, you know. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we have had some people, you know, yeah. break down yeah. uh, during interviews, you know, because they are recalling painful yeah events yeah. that's happened yeah. in their life yeah. and yeah. also being able to support them with uh, yeah. good resources on where yeah. they can access yeah. Uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so what's next for you Fola? <sighs> okay so uh, you know um, as we trans for this project uh, as we transition into phase two of our project there are you know several existing development uh, both professionally and personally so um, in the phase two of our project, we aim to build insights uh, gleaned from uh, the qualitative, I mean, uh, the qualitative phase mm -hmm. and preliminary findings to conduct a robust quality, uh, quantitative analysis. Nice. You know, this second phase, we involve admission structured uh, yeah. surveys to a larger sample of Black Canadians. Yeah. Yeah. And this will allow us to quantitatively assess the prevalence of mental health disorders, passive discrimination, psychosocial determinants. Uh, of course, it will provide us insight to qualitative data as well as we seek to deepen our knowledge and understanding of the mechanism of underlying factors that impact racial, I mean, that, that causes racial discrimination and uh, on mental health of Black people and informed, like, we, we're hoping that it's going to inform evidence-based intervention and policy reforms at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So, but on a professional level, uh, personally, I I am excited to continue contributing to the field of public health and, of course, social science research with a with a particular focus on addressing health disparity. I mean, health disparities and promoting health equity. Um, I aspire to publish our research findings in peer-reviewed journals presented at academic conferences and engage with policymakers, stakeholders to ab advocate for, you know, evidence-based intervention and policy reforms that can promote mental health equity for marginalized community. Yeah. Um, I'm also eager to continue collaborating with my colleagues and community partners mm -hmm. on uh, interdisciplinary research initiative that can bridge the gap between academia and the real world practice and on on a personal level, I am committed to you know ongoing learning and growth, both professionally and personally. I also aspire to deepen my knowledge of intersectional approaches of research to research and practice. I want to cultivate cultural reflexivity and okay, of course advocate for social justice and equity in all aspects of work and life. Um, yeah, I want to, uh, you know, I'm dedicated to nurturing a, a healthy work-life mm -hmm. balance and prioritizing self-care, which is important, yeah. Yeah. and well-being amidst demands yeah. of uh, research yeah. and teaching in class as well, because yeah. that's demanding as well. So um, I'm going to do this by investing in personal relationships, yeah. hobbies, and uh, yeah. some activities that can bring joy and fulfillment. And I aim to sustain my passion yeah. and resilience in the pursuit of meaningful contribution to our society. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you for your time, Paula. And best Thank wishes you, on your studies and, and, and your teaching and, and all the best, all the good work you're doing. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you for uh, everything. I appreciate it. <laughs>